Welcome back to the channel, fellow adventurers. Today we are testing the Freecon R1 Plus motorcycle uh, communication system with camera built in. So we're testing it on my commute home and we're testing it for the picture quality, not so much for the other features it has. It does feature an FM radio built in it is a intercom system and your full you know audio system where it's connected to your phone you can receive calls play music through it um, but that's not what we're interested in what we're interested in is the picture quality um, this is my commute home from work and I'm doing this as a voiceover because one I tried to record into the microphone on the initial ride and found out that it doesn't actually record through the intercom microphone like the uh, answer on the Amazon question section said it did. So Freecon, uh, update that because you cannot record audio through the uh, microphone in the helmet. What happens is when you are recording, it picks up the outside noise that surrounds the camera, which by the way is horrible. In playing this back, I realized that the noise is unbearable. The other thing I realized with this is that one, in watching the video back, is that the picture quality, it shoots in 1080 HD. The picture quality is not bad. It's not on a GoPro level. Generally, I shoot with a GoPro 7 Black and that has image stabilization it's it's very clear the colors are right so far from what i can see with this is that one the picture stabilization is not great it's not bad i've seen a lot worse but it's not great the second thing you'll notice is the colors uh like when it comes to the sky and whatnot as you approach the sun become very washed out now that could probably be adjusted. Everything you see here is nothing's been adjusted. It's all shot. And this is basically the way it came through. There's no filters used, no color adjustment. Everything is as it was recorded. So much so that if you look in the bottom left, you'll notice the date timestamp is not correct. And that's because this was the very first time using it. And I didn't realize that, um, the timestamp was in the was turned on as opposed to turned off, which is why the date's wrong because I didn't set it. You know. Now let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. This is my ride home. I work in Orange County, New, uh, New York, and I live in Sussex County, New Jersey. So I have about a 40-minute ride home each day. I'm very lucky because I live in a, a part of New Jersey where it's basically farmland. So my commute from Orange County, New York, to where I live in Jersey is basically through farmlands and hills and, and mountains. It's very picturesque. It's very scenic. Um, very twisty roads, too, as you'll see later in the video. So it, makes, it, it really makes for a nice ride. Um, very enjoyable. You know, it's not too long of a ride. But I figured I'd shoot and test out this camera that way. Um, you know, it, it's it's like I said, it's a very it's a very scenic ride. And it's a fun ride. Now back to the camera system. So the Freecon uh, R1 Plus is an is an option, an inexpensive uh, communications option that has a built-in camera. You know, I, I, like I said, I usually shoot with a GoPro, but I just, I don't want to try this because it's convenient. It's, it's, you know, it's on my helmet. It's there. It's, you know, it's, you don't have to worry about, um, syncing it up with my phone or anything now, you know, so I can just, I can actually speak the commands into it. You know, I can tell it, Hey, um, camera on it'll turn the camera on 
the camera off, we'll turn it off without having to press any buttons, which makes it really convenient, makes it easy. And usually I use, would use this angle um, as a primary. I know some people don't like the view from the side of the helmet. They prefer it, the GoPro in front of the helmet. I don't mind it as much. There are some trade-offs, like if things come up on the right side, I actually have to turn my head to show those things on camera. You know, everything looks slightly to the, you know, is looking slightly to the left because of where the, where the uh, camera is situated on the helmet. I don't mind it as much, you know, where when I have my GoPro mounted, that's mounted right on my chin of my helmet, so it's dead center. So it makes it easier to, you know, to just turn to the left and right and kind of pick up what's out there. Um, so there, there's some type of trade-off there. As you can see in the video, it's it's not bad quality, not at all. Is it my GoPro? No. N you know, now Senna makes a communication system just like this. Their price on that is about 330 bucks or so. This one is 200 bucks cheaper. This one right now, I think currently on Amazon is like $126. Um, so if you don't, you know, if, if you're okay with the fact that you're not going to get, you know, a 4K camera, this only shoots in 1080 and the stabilization may not be up to GoPro standards, but you're looking for an inexpensive option. I think this works well, you know, but and it's very easy. By the way, it's very easy to install. It installs like every other uh, comm system. You know, if you have speaker pockets on your helmets, the, spe the speakers pop right in there. You run the wire under the padding and then they give you a, a hard mount, um, which you can screw to the side of your helmet. Or, they, or you can use the adhesive mount and attach it to the side of your helmet. I prefer the adhesive mount only because with the camera, it makes it easier to, if you have to peel it off and relocate it. Because when I initially installed it, I installed it at an angle that didn't, in my opinion, look like it was gonna be facing forward. It looked more like it was gonna be moved off to the side. So I had to move the camera further back on the helmet and as you can see here it actually the angle is pretty good and it was just easier doing that with the with the um, you know the 3m adhesive that they give you controls are very easy there's two controls on top of the freecom one for the power and one to set your bluetooth or your wi-fi to use the app that they have available for download it actually connects through Wi-Fi and not Bluetooth. Um, and, and the app's a very basic app. In fact, I, that's, I have the app going on the phone. You might be able to see it in some of the uh, video here. Um, and it, what it does enables you to monitor and see the view with, you know, that you're getting through the camera. Also allows you to control the camera from there. But the, the app, like I said, it's a very basic app. It's, you can get it in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, Apple, I, uh, in the Apple app store, you know, the, uh, iPhone app store, sorry. And then through Google play, you know, you can download it. Um, you know, very, very easy to connect. Basically, you know, you go in, it's going to ask, it's, you're just going to search it through your Wi-Fi. Uh, click to connect it and then it's going to ask you to put in a password you know the initial password is, is very basic it's an eight number one two three four five six seven eight password you know and you can go in and change that after the fact if you want but it connects right away no problems with the connection um, and it worked like I said it works well it's a very basic app though you know um, but but it does work the other things that you have on there you have a jog control, which is basically a dial on the left side, you know, of the unit. And you can twist it, you know, just quickly twist it upward. 
downward to raise and lower the volume of the audio to answer calls. Um, what you can do if you want, you can set your phone setting for automatic answering while you have your headset on. And that way you don't even have to touch it, you know, and you can do everything hands free. Um, but with the voice commands, you can also do everything hands free. You know, you can say answer phone and it'll answer the phone. And, you know, you can say dial and it'll work with, it'll work with your phones. Um, you know, like Siri or the Google assistant and you can dial that way. Those features like with the audio, you know, listening to music, the speakers are not great, but they're not bad. You know, uh, sound quality is, you know, is it the same as like a, a center with a JBL system? No, but the sound quality is good enough that it's loud enough that you can hear your music even over the road noise and, and your helmet noise and, you know, which is, which is a good thing. I happen to like to play music when I'm on long trips and whatnot through my help. I, I keep a couple of different playlists, you know, for long trips and, and it sounds good enough. Like I said, it's not JBL speaker quality, but, you know, but it does work. The calling system works, you know, easy to make calls, easy to answer calls. Um, you know, but that's very basic, you know, most systems that way. I did, again, I didn't try the intercom system because one, I generally ride solo, so I don't really ever use an intercom system. I know people who do, um, you know, but that's, like I said, until I get a chance to test that with someone else, you know, I can't really speak as to uh, whether it works or not. Now getting back to my trip, so people think of New Jersey, New York, you know, they think of New York as New York City, they don't realize that New York State is very rural, it's not city at all. And where I live in New Jersey, again, people, if they think of New Jersey, they think of uh, the oil refineries, the area around the Meadowlands and whatnot. But where I live, it's all farmland. Basically, I live between um, dairy farms and, uh, you know, cornfields and that sort of thing. So much different than what people expect from New York, New Jersey. Now, I don't know if um, you can hear it because I'm doing the voiceover now, but the road noise or not even road noise, it's the wind noise around the camera is just terrible. There, I had to lower the, the camera volume um, down to 10%. Otherwise, it would be unbearable. This would just be unbearable to listen to. As we come up here, once I'm able to get through the traffic here, and it's very odd that you're seeing traffic. Where I live, there is not a lot of traffic. This just happens to be Friday evening during rush hour. And when I say rush hour, as you can see, it's not that much of a rush. Um, but generally where I ride, it's all back roads too. And there's generally never a lot of traffic. The amount of cars you're seeing in this video is kind of a, an anomaly because it's usually the roads are usually never this crowded and for some people they're like this is crowded well for where i live yeah the fact that you're seeing a lot of other cars is you know not the norm but here coming up on the left and to the right you're going to see some farms and the farms on the left where these cornfields are those are are grown for the local distilleries in the area um and those are actually used to make whiskey. This area is getting known for some of the um, smaller distilleries that have uh, come up in the area. And, you know, not, wor not world famous, but it's becoming famous locally. There are a lot of brewer local breweries and distilleries and they're making their own liquors and beers. And, you know, a lot of them have music and just a lot of fun, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. They, you know, weekends, they all have big events where you can go listen to music, um, grab your drinks, they serve food, and, you know, just a lot of fun.
the weather this time of year is, is um, a little cooler than normal, which was really nice. It was a beautiful day to ride when I was re, uh, filming this. Um, it was it was in the uh, low 80s, no humidity, no wind, you know, just great day for riding. You know, if I could have days like this every day, it would be great. But I do live in the Northeast, so this is going to come to an end um, sooner than later. You know, we're getting to that point of the year. We we're going to start getting colder weather. And then, you know, it follows the snow and all the other crap. So got to take advantage of all the great riding days we have. So as we come up here on the right, there is this beautiful red Camaro that's for sale. You can see right there. What a gorgeous car. When I was younger, I had a, a uh, 1979 uh, Pontiac Firebird that I loved. It was a blue metallic color. But that red Camaro right there, wow, that was a sweet vehicle. So as you can see from the video, you know, the Freecon uh, R1 Plus, which is again, the camera system and, and communication system all built in one. The, it, the video is a little bouncy because again, there's, the, the video stabilization is not great. You know, again, it's not the worst I've seen. Some of my earlier, like I have some older GoPro models that would be very equivalent to this. So, you know, even though this is a current unit for Freecon, it seems like it's using older technology. Um, is that a bad thing? No, that's probably what keeps the cost down. You know, is it acceptable? Yeah, I, I would say this video is acceptable. You know, it's not, again, not the greatest video, but, you know, sometimes you get what you pay for. And this is, like I said, this is a $126 unit as opposed to the center unit, which is, you know, $330. On a different note, you can see the double take mirrors that I changed to in action. And you can see they don't, they're very stable, no vibration, you know, give me a good um, field of vision. I love those double take mirrors, you know. Um, was such a big upgrade over the stock mirrors. And for people wondering, you know, I'm riding with the Corbin seat. At this point in my commute home, I would actually be in pain from the stock seat. But this Corbin seat is so comfortable. I could literally feel like I could ride for three or four hours and not have any problems where, you know, I would be in pain after 25 minutes on the stock seat. You know, so again, that's a, a major update, you know, major upgrade that I'm very happy with, you know, um, like I said in the last video, you know, I had, I did have to add some, a couple of spacers in to make the Corbin seat work properly. Um, but Corbin's customer service, when I reached out to them was fantastic. They got that answer back to me very quickly, you know, and I did what they said and it worked perfectly. The other thing about where I live is that it's a huge wildlife, uh, there are huge sets of wildlife refuges um, on the left and right as we go further. Um, they're very strict about, like you can go and you can walk the uh, refuges, and um, but you can't park unless you have a permit. In fact, we just went by one on the right hand side. You need a permit to park there, but then you can go in and take photos of the wildlife. Obviously you can't you know, disturb the wildlife, but it's great because there's dedicated farmland that's preserved. There's, again, wildlife preserves there. 
Um, so it's very it's a very nice area where it's not being overbuilt, you know. Um, you know. So, so this area where I'm riding through now is an area that this is a different way than I usually take home. I wanted to go this way because this area is a little bit more scenic. This is the first time I'm riding it on a scooter. I've ridden it in my car, in my car many, many times, but this is the first time on a scooter. So I'm kind of trying to be careful here because again, there are some twists and turns and there's a couple of hidden driveways that come up. And some of these twisties back here are a little extreme. It may not seem like it on the camera, but um, I had to slow down in fact, you can see the sign there starting to show, you know, the upcoming twisted area. Um, so I kind of took this a little slower than I w normally would like in my car, only because I'm not 100% comfortable with it because I don't know the road, you know, as far as uh, muscle memory and, and that sort of thing on the bike. But so just try to be cautious, cautious on this road. Um, but it's a fun road to uh, ride on. Like I said, it's got the twisties, it's, you know, it's scenic. You know, as, you, as we go by, I'm sure you've seen a few of the farmhouses that are on the left and right and the barns and whatnot. You know, again, we're known as a big farm area in this part of uh, New Jersey. So, the, where we had passed before when I was talking about the fields where they grow the corn for the, you know, to manufacture the whiskey and whatnot, um, that area is actually in New York and that's what they call the... Uh, that's Pine Island, and it's known as the Black Dirt region. There, the soil is actually colored black, and it's very nutrient rich, and that's where they grow uh, onions. They're very well known for their onions uh, in that area. But like I said, they, they grow everything, but really well known for their onions. I don't know if you can see, but um, basically the top speed we hit on this trip is about 62 miles an hour. We've gone faster on the bike, but all these roads are limited to between 35 and 55 miles an hour. So no need to go any faster than that on these. Although if I did want to open it up, really probably could because as you can see now, there's been no traffic going the other way, no traffic in front of me. But, you know, the bike is, a, is very capable. You know, it's a 150, but like I said, I've gotten it to about 65 without a problem. And that's carrying me, and I'm a big guy, where I'm sure if somebody were, you know, 50 pounds lighter than me, they could squeeze a few more miles per hour out of it. So what does everybody think of the uh, video on the Freecon uh, R1 Plus? You know, if you can leave it in the comments and just curious what everybody else thinks. Is it something that I should keep using? Should I switch to the GoPro? Or maybe use them in conjunction? You know, um, like I said, in, in this, it's gonna be video coming soon where I'm gonna be using the Insta360 camera that I purchased. Um, some stuff with, we're going to be adding drone footage and whatnot. But again, this was really just a test of the uh, Freecon system. 
but I'm really liking whatever he thinks about it. You know. Also, too, this is the point of the video where I say, uh, ask everybody to please like and please subscribe. I notice with um, so many, when I go into the analytics section on YouTube Studio, so many people watch the videos but never like, or more importantly, never subscribe. The majority of my views are from people who are not subscribers. Well, if you like this content and you want to keep seeing more, please like and subscribe. The more you like, what happens is it moves it up into the uh, into the analytics and shows it to more people. More people like it. More people subscribe, and we get to make more videos. So, really would appreciate if everybody can uh, like and subscribe. I do want to thank everybody who does watch and everybody who has liked and everybody who has already subscribed. It is so appreciative. You know, I appreciate all of you. I did speed the video up slightly, just so everybody knows, because I didn't want anybody to sit here for 40 minutes. As it is now, this is going to be close to a 30 minute video. And I know everybody likes to, not everybody else um, likes to watch long form videos. I know myself, generally speaking, I tap out usually in videos that are anything more than 35 minutes. So that's why most of my videos I make are shorter videos. But I did want to, you know, show. What it's like to ride home, you know, my, my daily commute. Soon you'll see uh, to my right and then further ahead, you'll start to see some of the small mountains. Um, I'm basically, we're going to continue straight and then I'm going to head up to the top of one of those uh, small hills, mountains, small mountains. Obviously to the people on the west coast with giant mountains, these are not what you expect, but they're these are nice mountain ranges here, um, not far off from the Pocono Mountains and High Point Mountain here in New Jersey. Um, so we, we, we start to increase in elevation here and I'll start heading up my house on top of one of the hills. Um, so you'll see me click off here soon, you know, but it's, a, it's a, it's again, it's a nice ride. When the, when I first got the ADV 150, uh, before it was going through its break-in period, or while it was in this breaking period, it did struggle going up hills. I uh, noticed that as it's been as it's broken in, that has become a lot less of a problem. You know, it has no problem going up hills, which is which in the beginning I was very worried about it because they didn't, it wasn't broken in and it was struggling, but not anymore. We've seen to be past that. I'm kind of using this now with the, you know, with the saddlebags and eventually I'm, I'm very torn as to whether I want to put a, um, a top case on it. I have a G, a Jivy top case that I can add to it. I would just have to get the rack, but I kind of think that takes away from the look. I also think it kind of hides the tail lights, um, especially after I swap out with the fender eliminator. I think it kind of hides those, so don't know if I really want to do that. Um, but I kind of use this like a mini uh, sport touring bike, one that just doesn't go very fast, you know. But I really do love it. And with that, we're going to wrap up. And again, thank you for watching.